Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we'll be looking at the real-time ray tracing features stealth dropped in Eevee in Blender 4.1. Let's go. So I was poking around in Eevee the other day in the new Blender 4.1 official main branch launch and realized that there was some ray tracing features that had been snuck in. No one's talking about it. Very exciting. Ray tracing is going to be happening in Eevee Next, which is the big sort of highlight feature of Eevee Next. It will enable real-time ray tracing, which is going to just open up the door for a lot of great realism in Eevee. Now I'm going to come over to the render tab for the render engine. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. And I'm going to open up screen space and I'm going to turn on refraction. And I'll come up here and click new to create a new shader. I'll call this glass. And to make glass, we're just going to come over to transmission, open this up, turn the weight up to one. Now I'm going to open up the side menu. And if you remember, in the past, in EV, every time we do a transparent material, so anything that has like low alpha or any kind of transmission, you need to come over here and change the blend mode. You know, usually we change it to either alpha hash or alpha blend, and the same for the shadow. And then you'd have to turn on refraction by clicking this button here, but you'll notice it's a little bit different. It says ray trace refraction. And this is what clued me in the other day when I was playing around with this. This is actually a brand new feature. So it's going to use ray tracing to determine the refraction. So if I turn this on, it's going to activate and we're going to start to get real-time ray tracing. So if I turn down the roughness of this material, you can see that we're actually seeing through the material really well. And if you'll notice, we've got blend mode set to opaque, which is really exciting. Now, an interesting side byproduct of this is if you have this set to something like alpha hashed, you're going to have a huge hit to your performance. So if you're playing and you're like, why is my FPS dropped really, really low? Just check your transparent materials that are using refraction and make sure they're all set to opaque because this works really well when they're set to opaque. But when they have uh, alpha hash turned on, it just really tanks your playback. So you don't need it. I'm going to just leave that off now for transparent materials and EV. <laughs> it's very exciting. I get really excited about this. I don't know about you guys. I'm this is like Christmas for me. Woohoo. So now we're going to make some liquid in this. And one thing that there's a limitation with this is that in Eevee, we can't have two layers of refraction kind of stacked on top of each other. So I can't make this glass, right? And uh, let me just turn this saturation back off. So I can't make this glass and then like put a liquid inside it, have another object that's a liquid, and then like another object that's a piece of glass and like put them all inside each other. It's just not going to work. EV is only going to let us have one layer, right? So we've got our one layer now, which is glass. So we need to have all the fluid stuff and all the liquid and all the different layers kind of happen within this shader. So we're just going to create a little trick to make that happen. So I will come over here and I'm going to just get my shader editor a bit, bit larger in the view here. I'm going to come here and I'm going to create a texture coordinate node and just drop this here. I'm going to grab a uh, mapping node, drop this here. And I'm going to grab a color ramp and I'm going to grab a gradient texture. All right, that's our recipe here. So the way we're going to hook all this up, we're going to take the object coordinate, plug it into the vector. We're going to take the vector output and plug it into the vector input of the gradient texture. And I'll just show you what this is looking like so you can see it. Take the color straight into the surface and you can see here we've got this gradient. And with this mapping node, we can rotate it. So I'm going to go 90 degrees on the Y. And with the color ramp, drop this here, we can increase the contrast and sharpen it up, decide where we want this uh, sort of layer to end. So what we're gonna have now is a fluid where this glass container is gonna be full up to this point, and then it's gonna have um, uh, no fluid up, up in this white area. So what we can do is we can grab uh, the color that we want for the fluid, so the black area. So I'm gonna just click on the black swatch, and then come over here and I'll brighten it up and I'll grab some kind of fun briny color like this. And we'll leave the top white because it'll just be transparent glass. So we're gonna take this color and I'll plug it into the base color and I'll take the BSDF and bring it back. So now we've got this part working. Um, I might turn my IOR down a little bit so the refraction's not as strong, so 1.3 maybe. And what we need to do now is we need to make the surface of the liquid, right? And the best way for us to do that is actually to use another object because we go to this refraction and stuff and it's going to be way too complex to create that um, flat interior surface using just the shader. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go shift a mesh circle and I'll grab this thing up and bring it right up to where we have the surface of the liquid. Go into edit mode and select all the verts and then we go F3 grid fill and then we can leave edit mode and then click new to create a new shader. We'll call this a liquid surface and let's jump over to the shader and what we're going to do is match things up so we can um, just give it a similar color. In fact, we can actually grab the exact color right here. If you come over to the hexadecimal code, I can copy that special code and that will basically, we can input that over here and that'll give us the exact same color. So you can paste the hex code and there it is. So now they match. Bring my roughness down and then I'm going to take my transmission weight all the way up. Now you can see that it's visible. We're going to come over here to the side menu and if we turn on ray trace refraction, it will disappear again, because again, we can only have one layer of refraction. So I'll just keep it turned off and I'll set the blend mode to alpha, alpha hashed because um, alpha blend will also make it disappear. So I need to go alpha hashed and I might keep the shadows set to alpha hashed as well. All right, cool. So now we're going to have a surface of the water. Now let's create a little bit of detail on the surface of this water. So I'm going to come to the circle, go to the wrench, and I'm going to grab a subdivision surface. So I'm going to crank it up maybe to three, and then I'm going to add a displacement modifier. Click new to create a new texture. I'm going to jump to the texture tab and over here in the texture tab, I'm going to switch the type to clouds. You can see already it's starting to go crazy. I'm going to right click and shade smooth. Then I'm going to come back to the tab here and turn the strength right down. And you can see now we've got this nice kind of wobbly surface and I might go back to the texture tab and take the size right up so it's a bit larger. So this is a good little like taste of what's to come with EV Next. Really exciting that we've got it in here now um, to play where I'm with in this version of Blender. Um, very excited. Now, hopefully we'll see EV Next come out in the next release. Hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out the Patreon where we've got this project file. If you could join this month, It'll be available for only this month, so you can join up. And also, you can get all the uncut versions of this these tutorials. And this one uh, goes for how long? About an hour and 45 minutes. And I do a lot of extra stuff, go into a lot of detail, explore, create this image. Um, so a lot of really awesome detail there. If you want to join up, you can get access to that by joining on Patreon or joining at the all-access level or higher on YouTube. You can access to the, all in the uncut tutorials there. So if you love bonus content, go check it out. Thanks to all the supporters on YouTube and Patreon that are already making this channel uh, run. Thank you for supporting everything I'm doing. Really appreciate you guys. And I will catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a fantastic week. See you later. Bye.